Good afternoon. My name is Malfoy Ashen, Senior Solutions Architect for Liquor Labs, and today we're going to talk about managing the VDI experience or the importance of understanding user experience metrics in Stratosphere UX. Now let's just talk briefly about an agenda. First, we're going to talk about understanding desktop transformation, gauging the correct metrics, including the client operating system, host hypervisor, storage systems, virtual network switching environments, and application utilization information. Then we're going to talk about learning your environment, the signal-to-noise ratio, predictive analytics, and finally, alerting and reporting. Now, what I'd first like to discuss is the challenges and barriers to desktop transformation. And I realize the, the graphic on the right-hand side is a little bit comical, but it's actually quite viable towards the challenges that we see most of our users experiencing when they're actually looking to implement VDI. And in the bottom right-hand corner of this little cartoon, we see a little user here using their terminal through VDI and calling up the help desk and saying, help, my computer is really slow, and it might be a VDI problem, and it might not be. But the reality is, is the help desk individual on the other side of the line really doesn't know exactly what to look at or what to fix in order to resolve this particular problem. It could be anything that's causing this problem, from the broker to the console to the user directory, to the infrastructure itself, to the servers, to the desktops, to some system that the user is connecting with, or even some kind of communications protocol issue. So in regards to Stratosphere UX, we're going to ask a lot of very poignant questions. First, so first off, is your virtual infrastructure design viable? How do you know that what you've built for VDI is actually correct for what your users actually need. Next, can you monitor and measure user experience? Now, user experience is normally a non-quantifiable thing. It's a very seat-of-the-pants feeling. And we want to be able to assign some hard numbers and hard metrics to that in order to make sure that we can quantify those values and, and be able to show whether we're getting better or worse. And we're going to discuss a number of reasons as to why that's important. Next, can you identify issues at the user, machine, application, network, and storage level? Now, these are the five main areas of VDI that we're going to highlight a little bit later that correspond to the five areas inside of VDI that are most notorious for causing issues, slowness, bottlenecks, and problems. Next, can you monitor latency of access to network resources and performance of storage? Now, the network is one of those big five pieces that we just discussed a second ago, and those are very important for a number of reasons that we're going to talk about a little bit later. And finally, are you wasting too much time troubleshooting slowness, bottlenecks, issues, et cetera? Ultimately, VDI is supposed to be saving you and your company time and, and headaches and money. And if we're increasing those by increasing complexity, we want to make, try and make sure that that's mitigated as much as possible. Now let's talk about the four desktop transformation phases. Um, now, Liquidware Labs specializes in end-to-end -end virtualization tools and products, and we're going to talk about those four separate categories and areas and why they matter, what products actually implement those, and what phase we're currently in during the course of this presentation. So the first is the assessment piece, and that pertains mainly to Stratosphere Fit, which helps you categorize your users and your apps, identify good, fair, and poor virtual desktop candidates, spot your usage patterns and workloads, and baseline your user experience. This is ultimately going to lend itself to design, so building out VDI, making sure that what you're advocating is going to be correct. And that's going to help you identify your pilot user group, create your image, host and storage design, develop a POC or proof of concept, and right-size the resources for performance and total cost of ownership or TCO. Now, that is going to pertain towards Stratosphere Fit and our upcoming product, Stratosphere Designer, which is actually going to help you get from A to Z in terms of the entire design phase of the environment. Next, we're going to talk about migration, which includes decoupling the profiles from the operating system, background migrate to user settings and data to the network, as well as any time migration to a platform and helps you leverage thin apps as well as UIAs. And thin apps doesn't necessarily just mean thin apps. It can be any abstraction and virtualization tool like AppV, ThinApp, uh, SVS, etc. Now, the migration piece is mainly re uh, relegated towards uh, Profile Unity. Now, Profile Unity does all these things and quite a bit more. And you can find some more information about Profile Unity on our website, as well as a lot of other presentations, including one entitled Architecting uh, the VDI Profile, otherwise known as VDI 2.0. And then finally, we're going to talk about the validation piece, which is validating your user's experience, tweak, tune, and scale, monitoring the endpoints, the host, servers, storage, domain controllers, network, and giving proactive diagnostics, aka predictive analytics. Now, that piece is what we're going to focus on today. So that is going to encapsulate the majority of what Stratosphere UX does which is validation, tweak, tuning, scale, monitoring all those different pieces of VDI, and then giving you proactive diagnostics, aka predictive analytics. 
So the first thing let's talk about is gauging the metrics, and that's the client operating system. Now, to understand what really goes on with user experience, we need insight into the following four areas of the host operating system. The kernel metrics, WMI metrics, registry metrics, and file system metrics. And all four of these pieces are very, very important in understanding what the user is actually doing and how they're feeling about that machine. How is its performance relegated towards what the user expects the machine to be doing? Now, the first one we're going to talk about is kernel metrics because these are obviously the largest ones that we have to talk about. Now, these provide insight into what the operating system is doing with its resources, including CPU, memory, page faults, read and write, IOPS, context switching, memory, devices plugged into the system, um, display diagnostics, all kinds of interesting information. Now, if you've ever used Microsoft's Perfmon before, then you understand exactly how much data the OS needs to track. The OS is tracking a tremendous amount of data. So what we realistically need to be able to do is compile this data over periods of time without increasing system utilization, and then collect this information in a nice, easy-to-use database, and then assign predictive analytics and learning to that. And that's exactly what we're doing with Stratosphere UX. The next piece about this is going to be the client operating system, including WMI metrics, registry metrics, and file system metrics. Now, all three of these aren't necessarily as large as those kernel metrics, but they all serve very large points. And WMI metrics allow us to have a deeper understanding of the instrumentation and the variables that the operating system has to deal with. And this can be anything from what's my IP address to what resolution is my monitor set to and everything in between. Now, never underestimate the importance of WMI metrics because WMI has become a very large instrumentation for providing a lot of information in regards to the operating system that you really can't get any other way anymore. Registry metrics are next, and that's going to be the, uh, the registry, which is an enormous database that's full of detailed information about your machine. Any application that runs generally is going to pull information from here. There so, are some applications that don't use the registry, but they are very few and very far between. Um, generally, some new open source um, applications as well as some older DOS apps don't. 99.9% .9 of the applications that you use are going to be consuming that specific area or database. And then finally, we have file system metrics. Now, the file system is the heart of your machine. All the binary information about your OS and your programs are stored here. Now, we can do a lot of really cool things with your file system. We can understand what kind of different files and folders and executables and file types and user persona data is actually being consumed on that machine. So when you're ready to make the jump into non-persistent VDI, you now know exactly how much user data you have to sanction for per each user. And now we get to talk about the next of the five major pieces of user experience metrics, and that's going to be the host hypervisor. Now, the host hypervisor plays a crucial role in how understanding how your users are viewing VDI. Now, we need to be aware of how the metrics related to the system that supports your users are being used. Now, if we use too little of this utilization, this is indicative of a system that is overbuilt. In other words, you've built too much server for your users to use. This type of system is incredibly expensive. Now, on the flip side of that, if we have a system with too high utilization, that's going to choke your users' virtual machines and having exclaiming, VDI is slow, and that's that little graphic, that cartoon that we saw in the beginning of this presentation. That's, that's a lot of times what exemplifies that user behavior, which is VDI is slow because the hypervisor can't keep up with what the machines and the users are asking of it. Now, either situation is inexcusable, as our systems have to be utilized while still providing a good amount of overhead to anyone that needs it. And next, we have the storage system. The storage system is going to be the third major component of VDI visibility. Now, the storage system in your environment plays just as large of a role as your hypervisors. In fact, some people would say that storage is the most overlooked and most important aspect of VDI. And this is because that storage is the slowest subsystem of your machine. And this is true for desktops or laptops or VDI, really anything. And any increased disk latency is immediately going to present itself as a slow VDI experience to the user. Now, to protect against this and to prepare against it as well, you need to understand all of these following areas, which include read IOPS, write IOPS, which ones are overloaded, which ones are underloaded, what are your read-write ratios, et cetera. Now, I've had some folks say to me, well, we actually have the ability to look at input-output um, just rates, so we'll call it bandwidth. So if I can figure out megabytes a second and kilobytes a second, isn't that just as good as IOPS? And the answer is no, because unfortunately, hard drives don't really speak in terms of, of bandwidth. They speak in terms of IOPS. Now, you can have 20 megabytes of bandwidth a second, 
And depending on the application and how it's being requested, that 20 megabytes could be represented by four IOPS or 100 IOPS. It all depends on how the application is putting it, it, its input-output operations to the hard drive. So ultimately, IOPS is what is the limiting factor of a hard drive is. And as a result, that's the limiting factor of your storage solutions or your storage subsystems because you can only be as fast as the amount of spindles you have, and each spindle carries a certain amount of IOPS to it. Now, this caching systems can sometimes offset these numbers. But the important thing is to never rely exclusively on them because especially if you just have something like a read cache and you're doing a lot of reading and writing, all those writes aren't going to be cached. If you have a bi-directional cache that does read and write, it's not so bad. But again, anytime that you have a cache miss, you still have to depend on those spindles to deliver the IOPS that your users need to make VDI work effectively. Next, we're going to talk about virtual network switching, which is the fourth component of VDI visibility. Now, virtual network uh, switching provides a very unique problem for us to solve. If our users in a single hypervisor are moving large quantities of data between their systems, then this data is never visible to any network, to any network that you can have, physical network, despite placing a very large load in your hypervisor without any visibility. So just a couple of examples of this. If I have a couple of users inside a single hypervisor, and they're transferring gigs and gigs and gigs of files through either a peer-to-peer -peer network or a mesh network or even a simple file share, and if I have my network engineers go and place a sniffer on the physical switch that connects to that hypervisor, the network engineer is really not going to find anything because the majority of that information is never leaving the server. Now, to protect against this, what we really need to do is understand application SLAs, or service level agreements. So I need to know if I say that an application has to respond, regardless of where it lives, within five seconds. And if it's a physical server providing an application, or a web-based server, or even something that's also virtualized in the same data center, I still need to be able to understand how long the application took to respond. Not just the network, but also the application. I also need to understand network segment service level agreements. So if I have six or seven different hops, different router hops to get to that application, I need to understand how long each of those hops are taking. So where is my latency occurring? Where is the slowness? Where is the bottleneck occurring? And I need to be able to migrate quickly with new rules to make new segments in my network easy to see and understand. I need to expose different traffic types, regardless of what that traffic type is. So if my company goes and creates a new custom-based web application, I need to be able to understand what's going on inside of that information. And if it uses a, a custom port, for example, if we're using TCP port 8080 or 769 or something odd, then we need to be able to automatically encapsulate that port and understand the traffic that's going on inside it, as well as the SLAs for the application and the network segments. I need to un understand unauthorized and authorized connections and transactions. So especially, this becomes incredibly important um, if I'm working with certain government constraints like HIPAA or Sarbanes-Oxley or anything like that. If I have servers that I cannot have a user get to because in human resources they're not supposed to access those servers and it's, it's considered confidential information, I need to be alerted any time that does happen so I can make sure that my individual mandates and laws have been observed and we're correctly making sure that we prevent those users from going to those certain areas. Next, we're going to talk about the fifth and final area of VDI, which is applications. Now, I would argue that this is the most important piece of VDI. And the reason I would argue that is because VDI is just a vehicle for making applications work for your users. Understanding how your applications are performing is really a large part of understanding how VDI is experienced. The two are intrinsically linked. Now, understanding these applications means insight into application hunger lock status, a.k.a. ANR, load times, application consumption in terms of CPU, memory, read IOPS, write IOPS, page faults, graphics consumption. These are all things that you really need to understand. Um, now, network consumption and graphics consumption are two very big parts that are usually underutilized inside of VDI in terms of what we need to look at. And the reason they are is because VDI does not necessarily handle graphics consumption and network consumption very well. And the reason it doesn't is because there is no video card inside of your hypervisor that's actually making graphics consumption work appropriately. And there is no network switch inside of that hypervisor. Everything is emulated by the CPU. So the more network-hungry and graphics-hungry applications that you have, the less work that the CPU can do in terms of actually performing CPU work for your users or managing the VDI environment. 
So the more we can pull those things out, the more important, the more beneficial we can make the VDI import, um, response to your users. And then finally, we have applicants say application consumption deltas. And that's especially important because if I have, for example, a new update to an application, and this update went out last week, and there's a memory leak inside of that app or the update, then essentially what's going to happen is ultimately my users are going to consume more and more and more RAM with that app until they use up all their memory, which is bad because the hypervisor only has so much. And then once they've used up all that RAM, the operating system is going to say, okay, it's time to page the disk. So take all the stuff that, that I'm not using currently in memory and put it on the hard drive. Well, we talked before about storage subsystems and how important those are, but they're the slowest part of your machine. So if you're swapping to disk for the sake of, of memory, you're really slowing down the entire VDI experience for everyone. And every time that you swap the disk, those are IOPS that you're taking away from that storage controller. And thus, you're actually in, encouraging a real downward spiral of activity here. A lot of very bad things can come out of this. So understanding those consumption deltas plays a huge part in understanding how healthy your VDI environment is. Not just in terms of consumption, but also in terms of execution. How fast does the app application actually take to load? How long does it? How long has it been running for? How many users are running it? Am I within my license concurrencies, et cetera, et cetera? Now, there is no such thing as a one-size-fits-all environment, and this goes for either VDI or any other product that you manage. So, learning your environment is incredibly important when we're talking about Stratosphere UX because user experience, or what UX stands for, is going to be different for every company, every user, every machine. We want to make sure that that gets normalized. So in order to correctly gauge what your users perceive as normal, you first have to understand what your users are doing on a daily basis. This means that all five areas of VDI need to be baselined. And now once per this is performed, any differentials can now be analyzed across all the areas. Now, ideally, it'd be easier for one tool to do this, but if you have five different tools that accomplish this, you're still better off than having no insight than all. But the idea behind Stratosphere UX is that you should have that consolidation of different views in your environment. And if you can leverage them all at once, if you can learn them all at once, then you're going to be more powerful as a result. And more importantly, if I know the environment, if I've learned the environment, then I can also tell you immediately what's not normal about it. So ever, if you ever see a deviation in that normality, then you can automatically say, all right, I want to go inside of Stratosphere UX and see what's wrong. And in the graphic in the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see an example of high-level metrics that tell you, that pinpoint what's wrong. In this particular instance, I have a handful of users that are using a lot of memory, and I have one user that's using a lot of IOPS. Now, we can deep dive into those machines and find out what's causing that behavior, be it machine experience indicators or a new service pack, or maybe the user is just doing something they're not supposed to, like opening 40 copies of Google Chrome, which we can and do see quite a bit. Now we're going to talk about something a little bit more fun, and that's the signal-to-noise ratio. Now, this, this graphic on the right-hand side is very funny, but it, it indicates something that we see a lot of inside of major enterprise organizations. And I'd love to pretend this kind of thing doesn't happen, but it does. So basically, it would be nice if all users would respond to change as a positive influence. Unfortunately, that's seldom the case. Laptops have been elevated to a modern status symbol, and replacing that with a cheap and efficient plastic-thin client can sometimes be seen as a step down to your end user. Now, this is regardless of the fact that your VDI system that you've just provided to your user is many times faster than the old laptop that you just relinquished. But you need ammunition when dealing with this type of user especially when these types of users are ultimately going to drive up your help desk traffic. Now, let's just take a step back and talk about this for a sec. Now, what if you had a client, and we'll call him Mr. Jones, and Mr. Jones had one of those titanium lift laptops that was about three years old, and you gave him a VDI system. Now, Mr. Jones is, is a manager in your organization, and he doesn't like the fact that you took away his titanium laptop that he shows all his executives while he's on the plane and gave him this plastic thin client. So he calls up the help desk in the hopes that maybe, if he complains enough, they're going to give him that old laptop back. Now, what if you could tell Mr. Jones, well, Mr. Jones, when you had that old slow laptop, it took you about two minutes to log in. It took you about 20 seconds to fire off Microsoft Word. It took you about 25 seconds to launch Outlook. Now, this morning, Mr. Jones, when you logged in, it took you about 10 seconds to log in. It took you three seconds to fire off Word and two seconds to fire off Outlook. And I show right now that all your parameters are completely normal. What exactly is your problem, sir? 
Now, it sounds kind of funny, but I've dealt with a very large amount of organizations that have users like this. And ultimately, if these users are calling in five, six, seven, ten times a week, your CIO is going to ask you, why is it that VDI help desk tickets are much, much higher than my standard desktop tickets? And this may be part of the reason. And I've seen Stratosphere UX in these kinds of environments significantly drop the number of help desk tickets just because of the fact that we now know what is normal for a client environment. This is helping us get past that psychological aspect of what prevents people from adopting VDI. And now we're going to talk about some really fun stuff, which is predictive analytics. Now, once the five areas of VDI, which we talked about before, which is going to be client operating system, host hypervisor, storage system, virtual network split and sniffing subsystem, and finding your applications, once you've learned all these areas, what can and should we do with that data? Well, we need to define a process that looks at all the moderate scale deltas and information and will feed our learning and monitoring systems. Now, once these deltas have been breached, this is indicative of a problem that VDI is going to have. So essentially, we've allowed you through Stratosphere UX to see when you're going to have problems before you actually do. Now, understanding this level of detail is paramount in VDI management because VDI is a shared resource model. A small group of users is having an experience problem. It's only a matter of time until the issue spreads. So essentially, you could look at this akin to a virus. Once one of your machines gets a virus, it's just going to spread to another and another and another. But in, in fact, what we have with, with VDI is resource consumption issues. So if one user or 10 users or 20 users start consuming a lot of IOPS, then you have no more IOPS to give to the rest of your thousands of users, then everybody views VDI as being slow. And that's a real problem because once this issue, issue reaches critical mass, all of your users will be paralyzed and unable to work. So without predictive analytics, you'll not be able to see these issues until it's absolutely too late. This is a very, very large part of understanding how user experience metrics can have a long-term effect on VDI. And finally, all this should fall into the alerting and reporting system, which within Stratosphere UX, that's exactly what it does. Now, this information reaches its crux with both alerting and reporting. The product of products that you choose, in this case we're talking about Stratosphere UX, to monitor the five areas of VDI must provide you with accurate ways to process the data. At the same time, the worst kind of alerting tool is one that nags you constantly. Now, we've seen some older virtualization tools and products from some prominent manufacturers do this on an ongoing basis. I'm gonna not going to mention the names for obvious reasons. But again, if we have a tool that constantly says, hey, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and has you checking things that don't really matter, what are you going to do? You're going to turn it off. Now, we don't want a tool that just says, OK, go and turn me off. We want something that goes and learns your environment. So when you actually get an alert, it means I need to take this seriously, and I need to go look at this now, because what this is teaching me to do is how to stop a problem inside of my environment and fix it before my users even know anything happens. Now, this is actually worse than not having any data than all, turning off that alerting system. Only when an alerting system is paired with a learning method and predictive analytics does it truly become a powerful solution, and that's exactly what Stratosphere UX is, a powerful learning solution. So I just wanted to say thank you very much much for listening to this presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, you can please feel forward, uh, free to forward myself at Matt Boyajian at Liquidware Labs. Or if you have any sales-related questions, you can contact sales at liquidwarelabs.com. I also invite you to go visit our website, where we have downloads and trials of our products, as well as other videos and documentation. Thank you very much for your time.